Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's decision to again extend the tenure of controversial anti-graft Chief Ozem Boki has caught at criticism amid growing concerns over corruption in Malaysia. The decision has cast a spotlight on yet another promise reform that Datuk Seri Anwar's administration has failed to deliver on to replace the Prime Minister's discretion to appoint the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MAC head with a more transparent process. This reform was among the campaign pledges of the Premier's Pakatan Harapan PH coalition at the November 2022 polls. The reappointment of an individual plagues with scandals he has not answered for. To such an important office is already disappointing, said the Centre to Combat Corruption and Cronism in a May 14 statement. But, the fundamental issue beyond Tan Sri Ozum's May 12 extension for another year. According to the Graph Watchdog, is that the institutional capacity to combat corruption and uphold good governance shall remain impaired without sufficient devolution of the powers. In the hands of the Prime Minister, there were calls for a more transparent process from civil society groups when Mr. Ozum was given his first extension as Max Chief Commissioner in May 2023 after reaching the mandatory retirement age of 60. Communications Minister Fomi Fatsil, in his role as Cabinet Spokesman, on May 15 acknowledged the right to express such concerns. But at the same time, there are several considerations made by Prime Minister Anwar in making this decision. He said without giving details. Mr Anwar had said at the Kota Economic Forum on May 14 that it would be a disaster to expedite reforms by assuming that the elites have all the answers without even interacting with the masses. The statement was widely mocked by analysts and civil society with Electoral Reforms Coalition Bursi pointing out that, for 25 years in opposition, Anwar called for electoral reforms and the abolition of draconian weapons such as the Sedition Act. How about separating the offices of Prime Minister and Finance Minister by imposing term limits for the Prime Minister, asked Bursi Executive Director Ui Kok Hin, referring to the campaign promises made by PH less than two years ago. Why are they the reforms suddenly radical now? He added, dismissing the notion that these reforms would shock the masses. Mr. Ossum's one-year extension came despite claims by activists and opposition figures of selective prosecution and abuse of power deepening in the past year. An Ipsos poll in March showed that 47% of Malaysians felt the country was heading in the wrong direction, compared with 26% in January 2023, with corruption cited as the main concern. The Mac head was already under a cloud prior to his first reappointment. Then, he had claimed that the publicly traded shares valued at close to RM1,287,000 Singapore dollars that were in his account in breach of civil service rules in fact belonged to his brother despite proxy trading being illegal. Several graft cases pursued against corporate entities also raised eyebrows, with police investigating claims that the MAC aided a corporate mafia in hostile takeovers. An allegation repeated by a defence lawyer in court. One such firm, Pastec, was vindicated in its claim of wrongful prosecution after graft charges filed against it in January 2023, were withdrawn six months later. Investigations into former Finance Minister Daim Zainadin, a fierce opponent of Mr Anwar, after he was named in the 2021 Pandora Papers, which incriminated hundreds worldwide in tax avoidance and corruption, were penned as others who were also listed, such as Deputy Prime Minister Sohet Hamidi and Investment, Trade and Industry Minister Tenku Zafro Aziz escaped the probe. Daim and his wife were eventually charged in January with failure to disclose assets, which further spurred accusations of political persecution. This was reinforced when Mr Anwar's longtime nemesis, 
former Premier Mohata Mohammed, was subsequently investigated. With his businessman sons, asked in January, to furnish financial documents, dating back to when their father first took power in 1981. Tan Dr. Mohata dismissed the investigations as political in a May 10 interview with the Straits Times, pointing to how months had passed, but they haven't questioned me. Even PH parliamentarian Lim, Lip Eng, has twice complained about Mac extorting and robbing victims, with the latest being a claim that three rogue officers were in cahoots with a leader from Mr. Anwar's party to defraud a Chinese national. The trio were charged in December 2023 with robbery. These episodes cast a shadow on Mr. Anwar's off-repeated war against graft as Malaysia targets a spot in the top 25 of the Corruption Perception Index's CPI ranking of nations by 2033. Supporters have trumpeted Malaysia's improvement to 57th place in 2023 from 61st previously, with a score of 50 points, up from a decade low of 47. However, the CPI study ends in August every year, which means it was concluded before data series or had 47 graph charges were controversially dropped in September 2023, despite a prima facie case being established. Dr. Muhammad Mohan, President of the Malaysia Chapter of Transparency International, which publishes the CPI, said Mr. Zohid's discharge, not amounting to an acquittal DNA, saw many learning about it. To the point that even the Mexic selling pisang goreng banana, fritters by the roadside knows what a DNA is. When detailing Malaysia's CPI position in January, Dr. Muhammad called for the Prime Minister to be taken out of the equation in appointing the MAC chief. Mr. Osam's new contract came days after he said at the launch of the National Anti-Corruption Strategy NACS for 2024-2028 that RM277 billion in economic value was lost to corruption between 2019 and 2023. The National Anti-Corruption Plan for the latter period was put in place by then Prime Minister Mohata. Mr. Awesome has hated Mac since 2020 after Dr. Mohata was ousted from power and was deputy chief from 2016. Show how you reach that figure. What is the evidence? Dr. Mohata challenged during the ST interview. The NACS sets out only a review of the appointment of the MAC Chief Commissioner as a long-term goal to be achieved in four to five years. Institute for Democracy and Economic Affairs Chief Executive Tricia Yeo told ST this reform appeared to be a shifting goalpost with no political will behind it. We don't see any real efforts towards reforming the appointment process of the MAC Chief. Making the appointment process more transparent would certainly ease concerns over the institution's convenient use by the executive as a political tool.